Yeah. You're right. Okay, we'll go ahead and call to call to order the uh, what would be the regular meeting for July of the Steering Legislative and Governmental Committee. Today is uh, Thursday, June 24, 2010. Uh, this is our, like I said, our meeting in lieu of our uh, regular July meeting. Uh, uh, tonight we have, uh, looks like four items on the uh, regular agenda. First item is probably the approval of minutes uh, from our meeting earlier this month. I call June them from June 7th. I call on our Vice Chair, Commissioner Adam Coggin. Motion to approve minutes from June 7th as mailed out. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved, and we'll move on now to uh, filling some vacancies. First, we need to fill two vacancies on the Community Care Board. We've received two applications for those two vacancies. Uh, we've received the application of Frankie B. Johnson, uh, a resident of District 2. She would be a reappointment, having served already six years. Uh, on the community care board and we also received a uh, an application from mr. Mike Nunley he is a resident of district 6 he too would be a reappointment having served 22 years on the uh, community care board um, traditionally we give the applicants an opportunity to address the uh, committee if you have any comments that you want to make I'll go in order uh, Ms. Johnson anything that you want to uh, say to the committee I just enjoy serving, and I would just like to continue. Thank you. We certainly appreciate your service on the, on the committee. And Mr. Nutley. I, too, would ask that uh, I be reappointed to the board. I thoroughly enjoy serving on the community care board. And if you don't realize what's going on out there, please stop by. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. <clears throat> Thank you very much. We appreciate your service as well. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, recommend the board. Make a motion to appoint Ms. Frankie Johnson and Mr. Mike Nunley back to the community care board. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, to that. I will add that we have a letter with the applications dated uh, June 17th uh, from uh, Mayor Burgess, chairman of that of that board, uh, saying on behalf of the community care board of directors, we would like to recommend the reappointment of Ms. Frankie Johnson and Mr. Mike Nunley for another term. They've both proven to be valuable assets to our board. And it is our sincere hope that you will allow them to continue in this capacity. So if your, mind, if your minds were not made up before. <laughs> All right. Um, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I, got I, I can remember back and sort of take off what uh, Mike Nunley just got through saying. I can remember back when there were serious problems out there a long time ago and the board that we've got now. and. Has, uh, has done a tremendous job out there and uh, they ought to be committed and we need those people to come back and that's one reason I'd like to support the nominations. Is 22 years too many years of experience? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> being too pretty, yeah. too rich. We appreciate you, both, both of them. All right, unless there's any further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Nelly, your, your reappointments will be recommended to the full commission at our next meeting, which is Monday, uh, this coming Monday. So again, thank you very much for your service. Appreciate your willingness to reapply for that. Thank you. All right, we'll move on now to uh, six vacancies on the Board of Health. And to, for those six vacancies, we have received six applications. Uh, we've received the application from Chad Mills, I believe is a pharmacist. Uh, Dr. Jim Garner, who is a physician here in Murfreesboro. Uh, Dr. Ronald Wright, uh, who's a dentist. Uh, Dr. Dr. John Key, who is with who's a vet, I believe. And uh, Miss Mary Campbell, she's a registered nurse. And Ms. Tammy Adams, who I believe is a uh, practicing pediatrician. Uh, with the Murfreesboro Medical Clinic. Uh, so again, we'll, same thing, we'll give the uh, applicants an opportunity to address any comments that they may have to the committee. We'll just go in order here, Mr. M uh, Mr. Mills. 
not here. Okay. Dr. Garner is not here. Uh, Dr. Wright is not here. Uh, Dr. Key. Miss um, Campbell and Miss Adams. Okay. Make a motion that we approve all six. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That uh, those nominations or those applications will be forwarded to the full commission in Monday for final approval. Dana Garrett, who is the uh, director of the health department is here with us tonight. Dana, is there anything you'd like to add to those applications? Um, all of them have, except for Dr. Adams, she's our newest applicant. All of them have been over, I've been over for over 20 years. So they really enjoy it. They all asked me to kind of represent them here today. Um, but they all asked to be pre approved. Thank you very much. We sure appreciate you being here. And, uh, thank you. And thank you, thank you very much for all you do at the health department. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, we need to announce two vacancies on the Codes Enforcement Adjustments and Appeals Board. Uh, we have Robert Dean Warren and Joe Machado. Uh, their terms are expiring on that board. Next, we need to take up an anti-litter resolution. I'm calling uh, Mayor Burgess to come forward. Uh, Commissioner Williams and uh, our County Attorney Jeremy Cawthorn. To, whoever wants to join us at the table, come and talk about the anti-litter resolution. Okay. Well, first of all, we'll we'll find out who did their homework. <laughs> uh, we gave this out to you last time and uh, explained to you that it, it's a fairly, not overly complicated, but it has some issues in there that might be a bit hard to understand. And uh, But I have reviewed it again. I have a couple of very minor questions, but as I reviewed it again, I, I believe even now that it's, um, it's pretty much what we thought we wanted and what we uh, asked for and uh, I'm sure there'll be some other questions but we have here someone that can explain you know some of the issues with with respect to how much what the penalties are and how we can impose those and why we've had to structure this thing are a bit complicated you probably can't see that with just reading the document itself but we have counsel here that can help us if you have a question about why we didn't put but a $50 uh, fine in there for that because there's legal case law that supports all of that. But um, so I guess we just open it up, John, and let them uh, ask their questions. I'll ask a couple of simple questions to sort of get it started if you want me to. And Mayor, maybe what we can do too, the, the, I guess the guts of it start with section three and, and the, the titles to each paragraph are fairly self-explanatory. For example, section three talks about litter in public places. Maybe we can just go down through there yeah. section by section, just give a quick thumbnail sketch of what this paragraph says. Okay, I want to ask the Commissioner, it's a more of a general question, but because ordinances like this are needed throughout the county, but I know I, in, in my county commission district, I, I've had um, numerous things that the director of and the building codes and the, and the inspectors they they get this thing done and they go through the process. They had one they had one situation. And I don't want to call out the names of anything or locations, but they had a they had a situation over here. it's in my district that they've been dealing with for a number of years. And you probably know what I'm talking about. But they went they had to go through the grand jury on something. The grand jury <coughs> says, sends it back says it's civil. You know they the building codes department doesn't have the teeth sometimes they need to take care of some of these situations. I'm talking about I'm talking about places that are just running the, a, a subdivision or a, uh, or, or, or a road with this massive of problems like all kinds of junk cars, all kinds of uh, violations, and you know, and you it, it's for them 
you know, they carry, they go through the process, they do their job, and then they get into the um, the court system, and their hands get tied over there, or it may be just a fifty dollar slap on the wrist, you know, on some of these things. There, there are problems that are threats, and I know some of the rural commissioners probably know what I'm talking about. Um, somehow, we've got to have something in place that will give the coast department teeth enough to be able to combat some of that stuff because uh, there are some places that you, they, they send them a letter, they take care of it just, just that quick. But there's some places that are on and on and, and on. Um, I've got a deal, I'm, I'm on, and I'll call this one. Kingwood Lane is one of, is one of the big, you know what, what I'm talking about on it? You know? No, no, sir. Right now. Now, uh, the Coast Department knows what I'm talking about. And it borders your district yeah, I know what you're as well. Uh, this yeah. has been going on. And, and those guys and girls over there, our ladies, they don't have the, the teeth sometimes. To, so in some of these ordinances, we got to put the teeth in it to protect those citizens out there when there's big violations out there. Well, I think you'll probably find this pretty satisfying then because there is this whole issue of the $50 fine. And so... I guess that where that kind of generates itself from is the Tennessee Constitution way, way, way back in the day decided that you cannot <coughs> issue a civil fine in excess of $50 without impaneling a jury. So a jury has to decide any fine that's over $50. Mm -hmm. So that is somewhat problematic, but I think you're going to find that this, this statute and then this resolution is crafted in such a way that it will give the, the codes some teeth. For instance, the $50 is a per instance fine. Uh, this can be something as simple as throwing a letter out on the ground, an envelope on the ground. That's that's litter. But Additionally, there's, pro there's a separate thing that has to do with property that has become junky. It has rubbish, litter, etc. on it. With that, because it's compensatory in nature, it's not considered a fine. And because it's compensatory in nature, we're allowed to recover exactly whatever it costs the county to clean it up if we elect to do that. So what we've structured this in such a way is that if codes or whoever, and, and we have not limited this to codes because the statute that allows us to do that, to enact this resolution, does not limit it. So we can have codes or whoever can send somebody a letter and say, look, you need to clean this up. And it's up to the county whether or not they want to issue a $50 a day fine or they can clean it up themselves. Now, if they clean it up themselves, we send them a bill for how much ever it costs us to clean it up. If they do not pay it within 60 days, we can go down to the county clerk and file it as a lien against the property. So it's, I think it really is kind of... It, well, if that's the case, does the coast does the coast department know this? Yeah. Well, we well, have. He's talking about in this. In this. I'm talking, I'm talking about. Well, this does, is contingent. Well, I know that. <clears throat> and, and I. But what I'm what I'm getting at is, if we need to pass laws that we need to pass, and there are litter problems out there, and I 100% agree. I guess what I'm going on is, if we're going to put the teeth in this, let's get some teeth in some other things that need addressing as well because those guys and, and, and ladies over there their hands are tied a lot of times from what I'm understanding from them because I get the complaints from, from the citizens as well as other commissioners do and I know the mayor gets them as well but we've got to we've got to give them some ammunition over there to, to be able to protect the property rights and the property owners uh, out in our districts well th this document went a bit further than we even talked about you know the purpose of this was to stop people from littering throwing stuff right. out but we've got language in this structure right here that will do just what he said as far as helping us clean up sites right. that are unsightly filled with litter debris whatever that should right. be removed so we've got the tool in here that we don't have currently that's, and, and that's good that that's that's a good thing even and this is not it, just platted subdivisions this no, is uh, any anyone any piece size of property, lot didn't matter. That's right. Okay. If we were to go out and find old um, tires, refrigerators, and and they don't clean it up, we can go clean it up and put a lien on that property. Yes, sir. In three days, if they don't respond, then it's our choice. Uh, 
at that point, whether we want to do that or give them more time. But every day they don't do it, we have the fifty dollars uh, per day fine accruing, and then we can elect okay. to go out and clean it up. And then, uh, no matter how long that stuff has been there, once this, right. once this there. thing goes into effect, right. <coughs> just to real briefly on a little more of the history on there, because the mayor and the legal staff have worked really good on this. This this came through the public works committee from some complaints that I've had that in there because we have the pockets like you're talking about Steve that come in and out uh, uh, Anthony Johnson and some other committee members went to Laverne and Smyrna and I went to Eagleville and nobody other than this the city limits of Murfreesboro had anything so they were kind of wanting if we had something that was all for the for the county that was enforceable through this that would help it was basically started out because people are throwing uh, unwanted things in driveways and they're just mounting up and there was all kinds of we had a whole picture array of how this has gone on so that's kind of how that gone but but they have taken it a step farther to get in closer to what what y'all are talking about on this which I mean this is so so far uh, above where we have been and, and this also would include those other cities and those little pockets so it's not just limited because as you were saying the codes people is this in the city is it out of the city and now we have something that's countywide, so that would, uh, uh, I believe, help uh, make this better for the citizens out there uh, along this regard. Right. That's if each city uh, takes this on as part of theirs as well. Correct? Well, the ones that I've talked to said that, that they wanted to oh, okay. do that. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so we would have close yeah. to a unified thing out there. Yeah. So that, that was kind of why we yeah. worked with that. And we had gotten the city of Murfreesboro's ordinance to work as a basis on so we could kind of get as close to that as we could so uh, that's a little bit more background on why and how that got there. Yeah, well, Smyrna, did you say Smyrna don't have one? Smyrna didn't have one, Laverne, well, North, if we, go out, if we go out and find them, who gets the money, Smyrna or? Well, we, that would take us to section 30 I think. That's, you, uh, it says agreements with city mayors or managers. <coughs> says that the county mayors should be empowered to enter into agreements with city mayors and city managers or city ma within Rutherford County to disperse money for violations of litter control and prevention laws that occur within municipal boundaries. I mean, we'd have to have some sort of, I suppose, agreement with them for them to allow us to enforce this in their city. So I, we hadn't really, yes, sir. that was sort of one of my questions, but Well, if they adopt it, I mean, then they would be in charge of enforcing it and, they, and theirs problematically, I would say. Are they aware of this? Oh, no. They're not aware of this. This doesn't, right now we don't have the authority, I don't believe, to enforce it in their municipality, mm -hmm. but if they agree that this is the document they want to use and the structure they want to use, we could enter into an agreement with them. <coughs> That's, you know, you have to work out an individual, something with each one of those uh, entities. Passing this would not give us, still give us the authority. Mm -hmm. Each city that didn't have one would have to act. Yeah, they'd have That's to right. Act. But it would give us authority in the rural area, unincorporated Oh, absolutely areas. there. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That we don't have now. Uh, right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get you off. I, okay. Just a good question. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we can, Jeremy, if you could just take us through real quickly then in you know, the section and explain to us. Go through the section by section. Yeah, yeah, just, one, yeah just thumbnail yeah. what uh, each section talks about. Uh, yeah. Section three, uh, again, the titles are pretty self-explanatory, but the the litter in public places, this has to do with um, kind of curtailing individuals from throwing uh, garbage or uh, litter, et cetera, on, into public areas. Uh, the placement, Section 4 deals with, I guess one thing I wanted to back up and say is that the littering is a crime in Tennessee. But what the General Assembly has given to you all is the ability to adopt something like this that goes above and beyond what the criminal sanctions are. So what we've done here is working with, uh, on the basis of the city of Murfreesboro, it is inhibiting individuals from doing stuff in the county itself that's not otherwise criminal. Um, so placing of litter in receptacles, uh, this requires individuals to place garbage into a receptacle in such a way that it's not going to spill out. Uh, so that's an offense. Uh, sweeping litter into the gutters can't have people you know shop owners or whatever sweeping out the front of their uh, in front of their doors and you can't put that in the gutter uh, can't throw stuff out of 
vehicles, which is fairly uh, obvious. Um, a truck, and this is kind of interesting, is that the truckloads causing litter is, you know, when sometimes people overload their trucks and stuff spewing out the back. That's a problem at this point. Uh, Section 8 deals with construction site litter and erosion. Um, have Jerry, to let me stop you right there. I know Commissioner Black has this issue. Commissioner Will Jordan has this issue with with uh, landfill, uh, Middle Point landfill, and all the trucks that go up and down Jefferson Pike and uh, 231. Uh, I, I've been behind a truck on the interstate and seen stuff coming out of the back of the truck on the interstate. I, I assume then the county would have the ability under this ordinance to police that and, and find trucks that are they're flying out of the back of garbage trucks. Is there anything in place now that, that allows the county to take enforcement action against um, haulers? You know, I don't know the answer to that question specifically. I know that this would definitely give us that ability. To, to uh, public safety, I remember we sent word to resolution down to the state, and mayor probably remembers this. I remember that. When, when uh, uh, Mark Smith can, can actually enforce <coughs> Uh, the wheel tax stuff off of on uh, on state highways. Yeah, that's just last year that we did. Yeah, that was the wheel tax. I don't know I'm if wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if if if, the, if he can enforce litter on state highways as well. We'd have to review that. I don't remember that. I do remember the wheel tax P7. It, it, it talks section or cannot. He can't enforce wheel tax I like on, to on see state. The, and I'd I'm, like to see the numbers. I'd like to see the numbers. How many he's. Because I, I know it's a significant amount of money to be made right out there on Jefferson Pike, 231. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're asking, though. We don't know yeah. if he has the authority to force right. litter yeah. right. littering yet. Uh, this, just, this would have given us the ability to enforce right. littering. Well, it may give him then the ability also. This one. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, it this, could be that he could be, yeah. since this he could be on the state highway for that, he could. Yeah. Enforce the literal state highway. And, and I, I've been in discussions with Republic now. Uh, they got a certain hauler that they contract out their self, MBI. Uh, they stress to them, <clears throat> they tell me uh, to keep it covered. Uh, and, but uh, these other out of towners that comes in here, I think they, in my opinion, needs to be smacked on the wrist a few times uh, uh, to get their attention. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's no problem. So I, I don't know, again, I don't know if it's already taken care of, but I, I would imagine that this would take care of it. Okay. Uh, Section 8 deals with the construction site, litter and erosion. Uh, it's kind of putting the impetus on the individual contractors and uh, construction individuals to keep their litter off of the public way. Uh, Section 9 prohibits the putting litter in lakes and fountains uh, and the like. Uh, Section 10 deals with the throwing or distributing handbills in public places. I, I don't know if this has been a huge issue, but I think this is designed to try to keep uh, people from handing out a whole bunch of pamphlets and stuff like that. And uh, it has a it's defined in the statute exactly what a handbill is. So the, uh, the substance of Section 10 says that you cannot distribute handbills in public places except that if somebody's willing to take one, you can give, you can give them one. Right. But otherwise, it's prohibited. Um, and you can still attach a handbill to a vehicle. You, that must, uh, they can put something on your car. Yes, sir. Uh, Section 11 prohibits uh, handbills being placed on un uninhabited or vacant premises. Um, and then in Section 12, uh, where it's properly, um, where it's no notice is given, uh, you cannot distribute handbills um, in areas where it says no advertisement, et cetera, in front of buildings. Um, now, Section 13 provides an exemption for the distributing handbills. It, 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 it's a allows for inhabited private premises, distributing handbills at inhabited private premises. No person shall throw or deposit. However, um, 
you can, unless requested by the occupant, you may place or deposit any such handbill um, on private premises if it's reasonably secured. So again, the whole idea is to try to prohibit individuals from placing stuff that can get blown out into the uh, yard. If you subscribe to a local paper, they can throw it out in your driveway? Yes, sir. Local papers are specifically exempted. If you don't subscribe, <coughs> are they still allowed to throw it out? I, bl I believe they are. No. It says no person shall place, own, deposit, or leave exposed in any private yard or driveway any unsolicited newspaper. But, it's, but, but Section B says exempts mail or newspaper. What if, if, it's, if it's unsolicited newspaper, you have to tell the publisher of the newspaper, according to this ordinance, I believe, that you don't want them to I think that's right. publish it or to, to distribute it to you. If yeah. they continue to do it after notice is given, then then it becomes a violation of the ordinance. Okay. I believe that's right. See, that's what I think was the, the originality of this right here, right. is this part right here. But, you know, it just seems wrong that the property owner is the one littering when they're not the one throwing the papers out in the driveway or the road or whatever that's piling up and, you know, and, and uh, getting run over and getting mulched up and wet and, you know, that that was the issue of this, you know. It um, still goes back to you have to notify that paper, don't leave them here no more, don't throw them out in my driveway no more, which a lot of folks are saying, yeah, they're doing that, but they're still throwing them out there because then you have a, another delivery person and they don't know and they... They throw it out there. I think they just throw them out everywhere. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, my question would be, since on some of these properties, the county on county roads, I mean, they've been dedicated to the county the right of way. What is it? Anything in there as far as I know the driveways, but could they say that they're actually on county property? I mean, will it? That still hold up being right. If if it's a platted road, it becomes public property. If it's if it's a if it's a non-platted private drive, then you know you've got this issue of, of inhabited private premises. But either way, um, you can't. I don't. Can you throw? Well, we, we had something already in a previous section that said you couldn't throw anything out of a moving vehicle onto a right onto a road. So public, that's public already place, right. right. Mm -hmm. So, so public places, it's it's prohibited. Period. Private, it's it, it's it's allowed unless the owner notifies the publisher to stop. Okay. On a state road, who would be, who would get the money? It says it's on a state road. Would it have to be our wheel tax officer that supposedly well, catches them? If a county policeman or a state trooper or whatever, where does the this whole resolution is to be enforced by the county, and we can designate any person or persons we so choose that works with the county within our system to enforce this. It's not limited to the litter officer. I can enforce it. You could if, if, if we designated you as an enforcement official. It's that broad, and it would be our money. But, okay. They even on the state that, road. The state nobody else has, any, so well, has right. anything to do with us except, except the county. Okay. Assume that they're, they're cited under this resolution. That's right. This is a county specific resolution. So <clears throat> it's uh, General Assembly has given us the right and the ability to collect this money if the offense occurs here in the county. Um, <coughs> section 14. So uh, back to this. I mean, the, the, the paper is the one that's in trouble for throwing it into your driveway. As far as for the citizens to know if we approve this then they're the ones that could be in violation instead of the property owner. Or can the property owner turn them in and says, hey, they keep dumping these things out here. I want y'all to find them. You know, I mean, that's that's the cause that, that I've gotten off of it, is that yes, I don't, I've told them over and over I don't want it. They still throw it in my driveway or in my yard. But once it, uh, well, I understand <clears> it, but once this is, this is put in place, if they notify that publisher when the first time after that, Every time they throw is a violation, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that that would also uh, that that should be the case. Now I think there is something to be said though that I think it's also a violation to allow things to accumulate in your yard because if you have private property, um, 
and you your property has gone out of compliance, I seriously doubt there's going to be a code instructor that's going to cite somebody for a newspaper being in, in a yard. But if you allow it to accumulate, then we've got a problem because that, that creates an issue for the public. There's some accountability in, in, in when the, the person owns the property to make sure that it doesn't get to that point, you know. Should it be some documentation if, if there's a like a Sunday paper that's being thrown in every driveway and you tell them to stop should there be some documentation uh, that, that you've told them that oh, there would need to be some kind of documentation to prove I'm not familiar with that procedure though okay. I, I don't know exactly I don't know if it's a simple phone call uh, exactly how that's documented as okay. far as telling newspapers not to deliver anymore I'm sorry to go back to Section 11, but um, just out of curiosity, if I'm delivering, depositing handbills, how am I to be aware if a uh, premises has been vacant for 30 or more consecutive days? It's a good question. Uh, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's up to the county commissioner in that district. <laughs> so anybody who's looking to deliver handbills in Commissioner Sandler's hey, district, have. call him before you go out. There, there's some judgment issues here. Yeah, Whoever's yeah. enforcing this is going to have to help us review some of these things and make some determinations. Okay. You go back to the, the to the newspaper thing just a moment. Are, are we talking about the the uh, area outside of Murfreesboro? Are we are we including Murfreesboro? At, at this juncture, what this would do is everything that's outside the incorporated cities within Rutherford County. So mm -hmm. it's anything that is county specific, not overlapping with Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Laverne. It is, there's a potential, and then we'll get to this a little bit later on, that the mayor and other mayors could elect to have this be a controlling resolution for within this municipality's boundaries. But at this juncture, it's only Rutherford County specific. Okay. Um, I don't abstain from any votes, and I don't. Well, I don't want to abstain from this one. I'm not going to abstain from the discussion, at least, because I may eventually uh, be working for one of these newspapers. So I, <laughs> <laughs> at least there's off, there's an offer there, so we'll see what happens. So I'll probably have to have, if it includes the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, then I'll have to abstain from any eventual vote, I guess. But uh, uh, I'd like to point out that <laughs> that the, the Rutherford County and the County Commission advertises the Murfreesboro Post, and uh, it's, it's kind of unusual that we would prohibit the distribution of the very paper that we're advertising in. Uh, but I think we're doing that for cost purposes. I have nothing to do with that. I don't work for them. I didn't make that decision. Post is now but uh, I. I'm in the city, my district is entirely in the city, and I've had exactly in four years zero complaints about any of this, but I'm not out in the county, and that's an important thing for me to say. I'm not in, I'm not out of the city limits. But at this point, as he said, this does not give us any authority to enforce this in any other municipality. Understood. And Commissioner Jordan, let me say, when, the resolution doesn't prohibit them from, from distributing the Murfreesboro Post. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it specifically exempts them from the resolution unless the property owner says, don't, don't, don't deliver it to me. Right. And in that case, the way it's been explained, and I understand it, the property owner's rights trump any newspaper, whether it's solicited <clears throat> well, unsolicited is specific. After you notify not to deliver. Mm -hmm. I, I got a feeling these local politicians going to have to go back to handshaking. No more do it the old fashioned way. Meet these folks head on. And Jeremy, let me, where, where does it say it does not apply inside the municipal boundaries? That, that, I think, has to do with what our power is as the, as the county legislative body. We cannot dictate to Murfreesboro what Murfreesboro's policy is on this. Uh, my understanding is that our um, 
legislative powers can kind of meet its natural endpoint at the city limits. Okay. I think we're on section 14. Um, it's a dropping litter from aircraft. Can't throw stuff out uh, airplanes. Uh, Second. I won't say the guy's going to enforce that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that one. That would be, be kind of interesting. interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, section 15 is uh, posting notices are prohibited. Uh, can't, uh, can't put notices on anything but public utility poles, trees, uh, et cetera. Uh, Section 16 has to do with litter on occupied private property. Uh, this is going to, there will be a distinction here between um, uninhabited and the question, of course, has been asked inhabited versus uninhabited. Uh, but this will be a little bit, this will be a little bit different. Um, this one has, I'm sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit. This one uh, states specifically that it's a, an offense under this resolution to throw garbage onto somebody's private property. So that's still within uh, our, our means to enforce. Uh, Section 17 deals with owners, uh, and it, this puts the uh, burden on owners of property to maintain premises free of litter. Uh, states, owner or person in control of any private property shall at all times maintain the premises free of litter. So that kind of goes to the question of what's going on with these newspapers. If somebody allows them to accumulate in their yard, I think that's a problem, uh, at least under the, under the way the, order, the resolution is drafted at this point. Let me add, add something here. I just a general comment in the in the city, if um, and like all of you, I guess uh, the, the calls sometimes come to me. Okay, on the city matter, so I call the city, or I tell them most of these are building code violations of trash. Somebody moves, they throw all the stuff in the yard, and they're gone. You know that kind of thing. So I tell them who to call, or I call for them. Uh, if it was in the county, obviously, then you would call. It would start with you. It would be your uh, government. But the, the, these things about posting of bills, and if, if, if this is all in the Murfreesboro thing, and I haven't seen the Murfreesboro thing, if, it, if, it, uh, if, if these things are all in there, it is being universally ignored by the city of Murfreesboro. <laughs> Because they're putting up signs and sticking things in the ground and utility poles and on your mailbox and everywhere else and I don't know that anybody's ever done anything. Yes sir. The, actually this is all in the Murfreesboro. Most of this stuff is in the Murfreesboro. I've changed some um, phrasing and things but our points of departure from the Murfreesboro uh, ordinance are going to come a little bit later on and that has to do with some of the stuff that we found in our legal research. I'm not arguing and saying that this is not necessary or is necessary. I'm just, I'm just saying that I would think that they're ignored for a reason. And I suspect the reason is it would take a lot of people a lot of time to handle these things. So they are kind of dependent on, you know, a good rain to take care of some of this. I hate to say that, but it's true on Woodmore Drive. So I don't know what it's going to do on, on you know, County roads, but uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. I guess what I was trying to say is that it, we're, this is we're a lot of government here, sir. <laughs> we, we, we mesh. We mesh well okay. with what, what Murfreesboro is doing. So that's that was my point. Okay. Um, the clearing of litter from open private property. This is where the code enforcement officer is strictly um, charged with. Uh, and authorized and empowered to notify the owner of any open or vacant private property within the county or the agent that uh, you've got property with a whole bunch of litter on it. And this will let come, later come into, uh, it comes into, uh, it, it means something a little bit later on because we have a three day requirement for anyone that's been, that has a vacant piece of property. Um, now at section 20, this is kind of where we start to depart a little bit from Murfreesboro. But Section 20 Enforcement, the statute talks about 
it gives anybody in the county system the ability to be able to cite these individuals. It's kind of, it'll be a policy decision who wants to, for you guys, if you want to pass this and assign different responsibilities, but the statute itself is very broad and allows, allows us to do really whatever we want to do. Like I'm thinking off the top of my head here, the Sheriff's Department, probably Bart Smith, the um, enforcement officer there, and then the Building Codes Department. I mean, is that something that we're looking or thinking about, Mayor, or is it just maybe we, just we the Building do, Codes Department? And, we can do any or all of them. Okay. And it's sort of, if you read another place or two, the Mayor's responsible, so it'd be sort of up to me to engage every how many of those people we want to to, to get them to do this. Even says the money will be paid to the mayor's office, and we might want to change that. But yeah, I don't uh, think you need to be covered up with these issues. I mean, but what I'm, saying I'm saying we can if we one, can delegate this yeah, to and right. spread the responsibility across whoever we choose to. We have enough flexibility to do that. Section 21 deals with penalties, and that's where when I, at the beginning that was where the $50 fine clause comes into being. This was kind of an odd thing because there's a reference that allows for an up to a $500 fine in the statute. But then I found a, a case, it's called um, C City of Chattanooga versus Davis, and it construed a very similar type um, situation, and it said specifically we can't go over $50 even though it says 500 It's weird, that $500 statute was passed in 1995 or 96, and that case was decided by the Tennessee Supreme Court in 2001. So there was an attempt not too long ago to amend the Constitution to increase that $50, but it, I think it was defeated. Yeah, well, because this this $50 fine clause is over 100 years old. I can't remember exactly when it was put in, but it's it's old. So you know, $50 then is a lot different than $50 now. Well, the thing about it is, though, like you mentioned Even me. a while ago, <laughs> per case or per per issue of violation, a notice of citation for $50 per every day. So if you've got four or five different violations, $50 for each of those violations per day until they take care of it, I mean, that's quite a bit. Well, what, it's, what, it's going, what it's going to wind up start doing is the building the Coast Department, I mean, if, if something is going on for 30 days, um, like some of these ones that are, are serious. I'm not, I'm not talking about throwing somebody, throwing a newspaper out in the driveway. I'm talking about junk, piled up and junk, like, I, like on Kingwood Lane. And, you know, and they start writing a ticket, $50 a day, every day, and then it's gonna have to get somebody's attention. Um, Section 22 has to deal with the reimbursement from non compliant property owners. This is a, uh, comes pretty much from the statute. Uh, it is, this gives the county the option of whether or not we're going to do the $50 a day fine or if we're going to move on to the property <coughs> and clean it up ourselves. Now, the difference is if we, and I don't know which body would get, move on and clean up, clean it up, or if we contract out, I mean, that's kind of policy decisions. But we can then, if we go onto the property and clean it up, we can send them a bill for what it cost us to. Um, and that's where this important difference, distinction in the $50 fine clause, is you can't punish somebody with a, with a, 50, with a fine greater than $50. However, you can, if it's, a comp if it's compensatory in nature, whereas we spent $700, you need to give us $700 back, it can be in excess of fifty dollars. I thought the uh, Murfreesboro ordinance said ten days. You made the notice, and then they had ten days to get the the violation taken care of, and then that might, that might have been an in-house thing. I don't know, but I thought it was in their I, in their I ordinance. Think, I think on the weeds and grass ordinance that we passed, I think it because I'm called it codes on that. And I think there's a ten day on that one. I believe ten days is right. T ten days. Is Three days, ten days, that's up to you. Oh, I like three days. So We got three days so in here yeah. now. Yeah, I like three days. But if you send the notice out today, they're probably not going to get it until the next day or the next day, depending on when you put it in the mail, I guess. 
Throw it in the driveway. So, yeah, yeah, that would take care of it, I guess. <laughs> no, it'd lay there. <laughs> That's the whole point. Or from, oh. or from the aircraft. I mean, you know. <laughs> or, or an air balloon. But um, anyway, I was just wanting us to make sure we stay consistent in there and if it's something that we might want to look at too if it's a 10 day thing in this other one that we stay consistent in that 10 day time frame. And our, and our point here, I don't think, is really to find people. It's to make sure that it's cleaned up and it's free of litter and everything. I mean, I, we're not, this ain't going to be a revenue source here, you know? No. No. <laughs> but um, by far, but it's, it's just going to maintain status quo on folks having their property. And my concern is, is not this one or two papers thrown in the driveway. That's not my concern. My concern is when the, ser the more serious problems that the coast department hands are tied over there and they need some help. They need some, and it sounds like that help is, is in is in this package right here, right? I mean, it, it, it's certainly an enforcement mechanism. And if, if, if they have a problem over, like some of the problems we've been talking about, uh, coast department can go over and the director can actually make the decision and say, we're tired of dealing with this. We're going to go ahead and clean up and we're, we're fixing to put a lien on your property. This would be applicable in that situation, yes. I that. submit, too, in, in, uh, that a lot of times we have problems with the zoning something. But the reason we have a problem with the zoning is that the person that's across the street or down the road is concerned about what they're going to have to look at a year, two years, five years down the road. And this would, would certainly address that. Uh, they, have a, they have an out. Right. Now the, it's not. I think that is an important point to make about the money. This is not a money-making thing, particularly if we're going to, if we're going to clean it up and get our money back. That's all we're going to do. We're going to break even if we do it that way. And fifty dollars a day is not going to mount up much yeah. to help this county. I'm not looking at the, the general no, money. I don't I'm, think I'm it's looking, money at, I'm at, looking at the enforcement and cleaning up some of these trash piles that are throughout Rutherford County that that law-abiding citizens have to live next door to. Public health and public safety. Public health, that's right. Uh, Section 23 has to deal with recording the lien. Now, the lien is specifically uh, linked with if we clean up the property and send them a bill for it. Um, what happens in that situation is you send them county and tracks or whatever has it cleaned up, we send them a bill says it. Mr. Jones, it costs a thousand dollars for us to clean up your property. They have 60 days to pay it. If they don't pay it in 60 days, we can take that notice and we file it down to the county clerk's office. And then it becomes a lien on the property. It's not a the lien's priority is somewhat minimal. So I mean, you know, mortgages that take precedence and that that kind of thing. But nonetheless, the lien remains on the property even if it's conveyed. If the lien does not get satisfied it remains a lien on the property according to the statute so it's uh it's pretty it's a pretty sticky thing to do it sticks with the property well, they're doing that right now weeds and grass mm -hmm. it's the same thing yeah. uh, section 24 deals with the appeal of the lien if uh if a property owner feels like uh it wasn't a fair bill they can take it up with the chancery court and so that's that's supplied by the uh the statute Section 25, this is a this is a big difference between the Murfreesboro um, the, the Murfreesboro uh, resolution or ordinance, um, because what they did is they made their fines contingent on the conviction of a criminal uh, of a criminal charge. That's problematic, and it's not really it's not really the intention of what this statute what this statute was giving us. For one. Um, criminal statutes, uh, criminal charges have to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. This is un operating under a civil standard, so it's going to be the, um, uh, here I am, I'm going to use fancy legal words and I can't remember it. What, what is it? Help me out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more than 50 percent. What is it? Uh, uh, a preponderance, preponderance of the evidence. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. <laughs> And, That's uh, why he's chairman. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys to send out. You have to send out, Mr. Uh, no. 
Yeah. Now, so again, that that's this one is specifically it's independent of any criminal charges. So if a criminal charge gets brought, we can do this right alongside of it. If there is no criminal charges, we can do this independently. So it operates independently. It's an independent determination by the general sessions judge. And, and I think, and, and David Jones is a director over building codes. I think that's the problem he ran up on this, taking this other deal to court. He had to go through the criminal process instead of having to go through this right here, the civil process. So, and this is defined specifically independent. I think the Murfreesboro ordinance, from what I saw, could have some problems because it made it made a violation of the ordinance a crime, and we can't do that. The state of Tennessee is the only one that can define crimes because this is civil. This is a civil issue specifically. Section 26 deals with where the proceeds of this um, for this money is going to go. It's going to be deposited in the general fund. There's no. It's, there's no dictates of where this money has to go, but there's a preference. It's a stated preference that it goes to litter prevention. Um, Section 27 deals re with rewards. Um, this is specifically tailored to individuals who give tips that lead to criminal convictions. Uh, that reward money is supposed to come out of the proceeds for our, our civil fines, uh, and it's fifty dollars for a. Um, mitigated criminal littering and it's two hundred and fifty dollars for and I think it's a it's an ag criminal littering or aggravated criminal littering um, these last several excuse me these last several things are statutory based so we don't really have much leeway if you guys want to adopt this this is part and parcel so this is kind of a non-negotiable aspect section 28 deals with the administrative official which will be the county mayor Section 29 deals with disbursements. The Rutherford County Mayor shall be empowered to authorize disbursements from the County General Fund from the proceeds deposited from the civil fines to enforcement of this resolution covering all litter prevention control and education programs. So that's, that's part and parcel to Section 26, the stated uh, preference for this money to go to different types of litter prevention programs. Um, Section 30, that deals with the agreements with city mayors or managers. Um, so county mayors empowered to enter into agreements with county mayors or city managers within Rutherford County to disperse money for violations of litter control and prevention laws that occur within municipal boundaries. But that, of course, is contingent on cities of Smyrna, city of Laverne, Murfreesboro, Eagleville, whatever, that says, yeah, we want your, or we want your resolution to apply here in our, in our city limits. But if they want to adopt it and enforce it, I mean that's up to them. No, that's up to them. But yeah. we we have no we have no hand in that. Section thirty one states that uh, Rutherford County has to establish the necessary fiscal structure to keep up with the money that comes in from the system. Um, and then section thirty two has to do with when it will take effect. Uh, <coughs> You have to publish after it's voted on. If it is but voted on and passed by the county commission, it has to go into the newspaper, the full full resolution, and then I think it's uh, <coughs> after it's ran, then it can take effect. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate you. I, I, I know you all have spent, you've spent a ton of time on this. This was not an easy resolution to come up with and that took a lot of research on your part and uh, y'all done a wonderful job of getting this together for us to look at questions comments the commission in uh, <coughs> september that be published so it can't go monday it could go with the commission in august that would be your next meeting august it, it actually has to run after it's been passed if it if it's been passed it's before we can actually implement it, before it takes effect, then we have to do this uh, published uh, yeah. in the newspaper, the whole thing, the so, entire document. So we could pass it tonight, pass it Monday, and our full county commission meet Monday morning. Well, we have, we, no, we no, do. no, 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 no. August. Or at least it August. August. We, I you thought you said it had to be. Well, I'm sorry, what, what I meant to say is that it, it has to get on the, to the uh, agenda, just like everything else, but if it gets passed by the county commission, then it has to, the full document needs to be put into a newspaper before it is in. Yeah, the, the only way it can get on there to Monday is under <coughs> other business. And 
something this important than you, we maybe ought to wait and do it at a normal meeting okay. so we can right. put it on the agenda. Right. Right. I, I don't know if questions, but we can ask questions, but I'm, I move that we adopt. I recommend adoption to the full commission in August. Okay. And go ahead. I was just going to, I was going to suggest one thing. I think the three days is not uh, practical. If you got some people with as bigger problems as some of you are describing, yeah. I'm not sure they could clean them up in three days if we gave them notice. And I don't think it would it's handcuff us too much to make that ten days. <coughs> the city of Murfreesboro is ten. Be consistent with it. I, I'll just right. make a form of a motion. We change that three days to ten days. And the rest of it, I'm comfortable with. I really didn't want to make an amendment. So if y'all, I had a couple of things that I jotted down through this thing here on on section 21. I really don't think the mayor needs to put up, you know, with all. The, he's got plenty of things to do. He definitely don't want to deal with this. I don't think. I need. I think it needs to be under the building codes. Uh, since all of our other ordinances, something similar to this, and what they would be looking at would be under building and codes as far as looking at it and everything. The calls are going to come through there, I would say, 90% of the time or more, because all the other cities deal with it under building and codes. I don't have a problem with that. I was going to delegate it to them. Yeah, that's what okay. I was going to say. I thought they'd be delegating it to okay. them. And then the, the under 26, then, under section 26. The, the money part of that, um, you know, I would think that the, the building codes would probably do that and put it into their normal things as far as any collections, but I don't really have a problem with it going into any further education or whatever into uh, litter, you know, issues or education or whatever, you know, that we're putting in. Money. Yeah. Well, the, the, the proceeds goes into the general fund. Building anyway, codes is part of the general right. fund. It would just be a separate revenue item into their department, yeah. which is general fund. So that that's okay there. That's broad enough for us to handle that properly. Okay. So do we need to note that then as far as building codes then on 21, or is that part of this that you're going to designate? I don't mind you going in on 21 saying they should make payment to the building and codes enforcement department. Would it be better? under the initial for it to be under the mayor's office and then at some point in the future for it to be delegated? Yeah, that's what I'm going to initially do anyway, but I'm I mean, I, I don't have a problem with still saying it as, as the county mayor, but because he's going to delegate it, he, you know, he's not going to be out here enforcing it. No. He's going to have someone, you know, to well, be I think our litter coordinator, no, not our litter coordinator, <laughs> Bart Smith. He's, he's not, a, he's under the clerk's office. He's under the clerk's office, so. This, right now, the building code What's is under. What's his title again? I forgot what it was. <laughs> Little litter tax officer. Litter coordinator. Yeah, litter coordinator. The building and hose department is already under the, the mayor, so I mean, it's, okay. when you say one, you say you said the other one. Okay. And then you are going to change 22 into 10 days then? I'd like to suggest that. It's part of the motion. Well, I think it's part, part of the motion of already. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned that. I didn't know if it was or not. Yeah. Okay. All right. But you do not want the change in section 21 from the mayor to the building code? In the motion, that's just going well, to Well, the mayor just said he's going to delegate. I just think it would, I don't, I don't think he needs the headache, to tell you the truth. So if he's going to delegate it as soon as this thing's approved, then that's, that's up well, to him. So the first few months, of, you know, I'm going to have to be involved. Okay. At least we get a system in place, the accounting and all of those procedures. So whatever you choose, it's be okay. I'm going to be involved either way you designate that. Right. I don't want to make any amendments to this at all. And I'm, I'll vote for the amendment and for the passage of this thing. I just would like to, on section 27, um, just interject a note of caution there. The, the motives for anyone to call and report or reward or whatever will not always be what the motives will not always be what we want them to be, which is for a cleaner county. So we're going to have to be very careful when someone calls, I would think. And, distribution of reward dollars. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd interject that. that. The difference between the 50 and the 250 that deals with criminal, it, it could be the difference between throwing out a McDonald's bag and dumping a used refrigerator on the side of the road. 
that could be the difference, right? But in each of those, it's contingent on the a conviction for a criminal act. Okay. And so that is taken entirely out of our hands. Okay. If right. there is a tip, and that's that goes through the district attorney's office, that is a non-negotiable thing. It's it's stated in the statute that, that we have to do it. No. In the statute, when this thing was passed, it, it even got down, because it, it, it actually started in public safety when Bart uh, brought it through, you can throw a cigarette out a okay. window. And, and someone can see you do that, turn you in, and go through the criminal process, convict you, and they get a $50 reward. It's trash. That, that, it's, it's trash. It's the, I mean, what's I, the difference in adding crime stoppers? You know, we, we don't really care what, what their motives are, right? We, we, don't, we don't care what their motives are. And crime stoppers don't care either. They're just wanting tips. So if someone is being aggravated enough and Jack appears that he's got some folks in his area that's aggravated enough to turn some folks in, and that's what this reward system is really all about. To me, it, th their motive may not be, I don't know, the, the best motive in the world if you just can't stand your neighbor and you're going to turn him in to, for this, that, and the other, and I think that's what you're talking yes, about. Yes, that is. I, I just don't know that... I just don't know that we ought to, it's just, it's between those guys. Right. I'm looking at the bigger stuff myself, the stuff piling up in the houses. And I agree. The, the, like you said, public safety and health and welfare, that's the. I just look at this as being part of our continuing to grow up as a county and, you know, we're looking at at changing our whole comprehensive plan, our planning plan, and, and that's once again us maturing and growing as a county, and, and this is just part of that process. It, it's, it's not pain-free, and most change is not pain-free, and we'll have to kind of feel our way through this. Whether some things are enforceable or not, it's there, it's on the books, and some may be enforceable. And what I like about it more than anything else is to be able to clean up some places that that are just have become dumps and it allows us yeah. to do that and now we can't do that yeah. uh, but but it, it allows us the opportunity to go in there and do that and i think this gives our coach personnel and our director over there the tools to be able to go out there and enforce it as soon as the mayor turns it over <laughs> <laughs> this this is um, um once again, just in my mind, it's just it's just part of our our change process that the county's going through. And if you look at some of the stats that the Chamber of Commerce is putting out, and we're 255,000 strong right now, and by <laughs> the next 10 years, that could be 40 percent more than that. It's uh, just amazing. And and applicable laws like this are are going to help us in that maturing process. We can't do anything but help. All right, guys, we have a motion and a second. Uh, that, that motion included changing the three to 10, the $3 to $10, okay. Recommend adoption of the anti-litter resolution at the August commission with changing section 22 from three days to 10 days. That's it. All right. Real good, any further discussion? I'll say it wasn't $3, $10 in three days, 10 days. Yeah, gotcha. okay. All right, if not all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that resolution then will be forwarded to the full commission for review and uh, hopeful adoption Monday. Thank you. Thank you, no, Jimmy. August no. Commission. I'm sorry, August I'm sorry. Commission. You're right, August Commission. By the way, thank, thank you all for the work that y'all did on, yes. on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Jerry. Good work. Good job, Appreciate your help. See you all later. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're moving on now to any other business. And this time I'll, I'll invite Commissioner Sparks, Mike Sparks, forward. Um, the commission last Thursday night got an earful about the uh, Islamic mosque and uh, if you're like me, you've gotten a lot of emails and telephone calls about it, both before and after the Thursday night meeting. And I think Commissioner Sparks and I talked a little bit, probably share uh, uh, the same viewpoint as far as the process itself may have exposed a, a possible weakness in our in our zoning ordinance that that I personally would 
I'd like to see the Planning Commission study. My understanding is that the uh, zoning ordinance says that in re all the property outside the city limits of the four municipalities, all that property is zoned R15, uh, residential um, property, 15,000 square feet, lots or more. In R15 zones, there are three uses that are permitted by right, a house, a farm, and a religious institution. Um, there is no, there's nothing that either a house, a farm, or a religious institution have to do to locate on property in the county except submit and obtain approval of a site plan, which is done through the planning department and the planning commission. The county commission does not conduct any public hearings. It does not consider uh, anything with regard to that particular application of a religious institution, a house, or a farm. My, my concern is, and I guess it was exposed by this um, mosque application, not because it was a mosque, but because of the dimension of this, uh, of this proposal. Um, it, it was uh, anywhere I've heard from 10,000 square feet up to 52,000 square feet. And in, in my opinion, to judge what could be a very intense commercial use by the same standards as a house or a farm seems unfair. Uh, and, and I'd like to see um, some information or some, some study done, I guess, about pulling religious institutions from R15 as a matter of right. And I'm not talking, again, I'm not talking about pulling mosques, mosque applications from R15. I'm talking about pulling religious in institutions as a whole from residential zoning so that they're judged by the same standards that we judge any other commercial operation, a hair salon, a car lot, anything. Um, the, 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 what we do in when we look at any commercial operation, as you all know, is those come up to the county for um, a conditional use permit, and that comes before the county commission. That is heard. We, we conduct a public hearing. We consider things such as the does the proposed use have uh, a an undue adverse effect on adjacent properties? Is it constructed according with surrounding properties? Those standards of general applicability that are in our zoning ordinance, um, those are the guidelines by which we measure other commercial uses. And I think those, those guidelines would have been useful, uh, and it probably would have been useful to put a commercial, what, what I view is to be a fairly intense use here, through those paces. So f f that reason, I, 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 I think um, I want to throw that out for discussion, but I know Commissioner Sparks has, has uh, talked to me about coming before the committee too under other business with a resolution, uh, and so I kind of turned over then to Commissioner Sparks. To yeah, I appreciate your time, and I think this is just like this litter resolution, and I would just echo what Commissioner Phillips had said, it's just bringing the county up to date. It's just, us just growing up a little bit. This, this is a 20-year-old, uh, ordinance on that 84 uh, zoning ordinance. Um, I didn't realize I had calls uh, uh, about this, um, and I didn't realize it was coming up. And I didn't, and I didn't. I wasn't that familiar with Brady Pipe. Drove out there, come out of Bills Road, and it's. I think many of y'all familiar with that. Y'all are more, probably more familiar with it than I am. Um, it's a dangerous intersection. There's no doubt. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I just, you know, if, if we're if we're going to deal with something that that of this large of magnitude um, I think these concerns need to be addressed just like um, like John said if it's a, a hair salon a, a landscape and company whether it's a, a, a commercial development you know just like Walter Hill you know we we address these every every month and that's one thing that I will commend the, the Commission as you and you as commissioners uh, we made up be up here and we'll debate these these issues pretty up uh, pretty strongly you know um, and uh, whatever side of the fence you own on an issue, you know, we have the, the voice to represent the people that call us, you know, and, and I think, you know, I've had several calls on this as well as other issues, and we have a voice to be able to address those things. With uh, this, there's no, there's no representation, because in my opinion, the planning committee uh, really doesn't, do not represent the people, um, unless maybe, 
you know, unless you're a commission or something like that. But uh, that's one thing I will commend the commissioners all on is that every one of you will step up and represent the, the people. Um, sometimes I think the people are, I mean, I've seen businesses that I think should have came in that, that, that weren't allowed because of uh, adjacent property owners didn't, didn't want it, you know. It may have been a little mechanic shop or a little hair salon or something. But they um, had a right to speak. They did. They had the right to speak. And uh, uh, and I think really what, what uh, Commissioner Chairman Rogers had mentioned is really the whole premise of this. Uh, it's not to prohibit any other uh, religious institutions from coming forward to this uh, to this county. I think it just looks at something that needs to be addressed because this this is going to be a, a large impact to to that area. And the, my my concern is, is 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 from a traffic concern with that Veals Road and, and Highway 99. But basically, John echoed my my concerns with it. Commissioner Sparks would. Um, um, I, I was going to ask the committee to, to consider this until uh, August and <clears throat> maybe it might be a spot in there for this. Uh, I wasn't going to make a resolution, but just ask them to con consider maybe a, that <coughs> we have we have members here of the, of the Planning Commission that we might consider also putting in the announcements of the, of the Planning Commission's meetings, which were done and are done, as far as I know, absolutely, perfectly, every single time they meet. The, the dates are right. The, we might put in there some information about what is going to be discussed that night um, so that people would have an opportunity, <coughs> if they were interested in whatever, uh, to, to come down there and at least listen. Now, I'm not... Uh, I'm not certain that's a good idea, but I think I think it is a, a, a good idea. And I, I don't know about the rest of you, but Commissioner Sparks just said so, and I'll say so too. I was not aware that that was on the agenda, Absolutely. and uh, uh, I don't know if other commissioners were, and I'm just out of the loop or whatever. <laughs> but I'd like you to consider that. And Mr. Sparks has gone a lot further than I have. He's got some very uh, uh, things written here that that uh, uh, in in hard language here, so that's, that's very good. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned square footage. Is there a square footage that would be a minimum? Of course, I know that the Planning Commission and the Full Commission doesn't approve or deny anything for people coming up and being against it or being for it. We can't. We have to deny it or approve it by the zoning regulations. And we make motions to deny or motions to approve either abiding by the zoning regulations or not abiding by the zoning regulations in whatever facet that may be, whether it be traffic or <coughs> safety issues, and uh, there's a long list. I mean, but uh, this here, I think it's, I think it's, it's got promise. I think it's a good idea. I think we need to tweak it either more or less or, you know, make sure we're going in the guidelines that we need to be going in legally as well. But um, is there a square footage kind of thing? You mentioned the mosque, and that was brought up at the at that meeting that it, it is 52,000 square feet, I think, but they're only going to build 10,000 square feet first and so that 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 uh, statement there just kind of brings up um, we've got some churches that have started small and they are tremendously big right now tremendously big and and most churches do start that way because their congregations aren't that aren't that large they're building and they're growing <coughs> and they're doing things you know to to bring the people in I guess so, but, and, and other things like your agriculture uses, you know, I've seen small landscaping with one man, a truck, a lawnmower, and mulch in the back grow to, you know, two or three hundred people and trees and, and big time operation, you know. So, um, that, that's the thing that we can't put our, our, and I hate to use it, I'll use it on myself, my two cent opinion on 
because we've gotten slapped or my hand has been slapped tremendously and don't mind it getting slapped because it, it does quite often. Uh, I ask the wrong thing or say the wrong thing, you know, because inquiring <coughs> minds want to know, you know, <laughs> what, what's going on and what's being done. But that's the thing. I'm trying to, I think we're on the right track here to try to make sure we've got, as another commissioner said, we've got teeth in the zoning ordinance. Something that the zoning, the planning commission, as well as the county commission, as well as the planning director and everybody else and, and board of zone appeals and so on and so forth, have something to go off of. Because when we start throwing our opinions out there, that's when we get in trouble. We gotta have something in black and white to go off of and, and we've got to, I think this is a good start. That's what I wanna say, it's a long, long statement, but I think this is a good start. My, my position on it is, is I don't know the ultimate answer to it, but I think it deserves some study. It probably is some sort of weakness there, and, and I firmly believe in the committee system that probably this rests with planning. We're already in this, in this enormous uh, renovation to our planning ordinance. So I, I, wanted, I personally wanted to raise the issue to say, as we, as we renovate our planning ordinance, Let's take a look at this particular issue pretty hard Absolutely. and see if this is something that that uh, that that needs work. And so, uh, I, I know Jeff, you're on the planning commission. Is this, it, it, Gary? Are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and, and we Steve. Got no, yeah, like you were talking about notification. You know. Is, is I mean, is this an issue that's that's currently being debated and addressed in in our in our new zoning ordinance? Or <clears throat> we haven't gotten that far with. Mm -hmm. We're just about through, won't be too much longer, with the land use study plan. And then as soon as we're completed with that, the zoning resolution itself will will start on, it's going to be more or less completely re, rewritten, yeah, the whole definitely. thing. So we'll, this will be addressed. We could address it even before we do the whole rewrite. Even mm -hmm. We could even do it in a time frame shorter than that because the whole rewrite will take us a, yeah. a pretty good bit of time. So these things could be addressed even before then. I, I, I mean, and I'm glad you said that, Mayor, because I mean, because I was going to bring it up. I mean, we, we, the Planning Commission can address this prior to passing of the entire uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, I think that I think these issues need to be addressed uh, because, like you said, the 1984 zoning regulations are antiquated. But there's a, there's some other other situations that we've run up against that we've had to. Uh, you know, without calling the, the project, but uh, we've we run into situations where we've had to prove things, and because of the zoning regulations, and this is no different because the zoning regulations and 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 the laws that that, that Congress had passed in 2000 and the state law that the, that the state legislature passed in 2009 has virtually tied the county's hands. And and uh, so I, I think this is a good thing. Uh, I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, what if uh, I, don't, I don't know whether this committee needs to uh, adopt or make an attempt to adopt some resolution or not? But what if uh, there are three members of the planning commission here, and what I'm brainstorming right now and I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do but what if what if we bounce the intent of this resolution off of our legal department off of Jim Cope's office and, and make sure it's it, it doesn't conflict with the uh, <coughs> the laws that were presented to us as and I can't remember the names of them you guys are it's a, it's, a, it's a land use it's the Congress passed in 2000 it's a land use regulation for yeah. religious purposes and then I don't know the state law that was in but, 2009 but, but whatever those two laws are and and the the use by right laws anyway if, if we can bounce those off of his office and see if uh, this can be done without violating any federal or state laws and then uh, if that can, hap can, can happen, then we can reword this to um, ask the Planning Commission to study making that change in, uh, in our ordinance uh, that would remove like a religious 
organization from the right uh, to use, uh, like on an R15. Um, all of that would have to be, I think, bounced off of the legal department. I'm not real sure that I'm comfortable in, in making decisions that may not be legal. But I think a lot of us have kind of the same intent in our hearts, that we're wanting to make sure that, that whatever's put in a neighborhood is conducive to that neighborhood but we've never really considered that before when it comes to um, uh, any type of church or religious organization. So we're changing policy right now, and we need to be real careful how we do that. And, and I'd like for the um, um, Planning Commission, of course, to uh, give that some study. And it would be something that I don't think um, would go without debate and would not take more than just one meeting for us to get through. And something as age-old as what we're dealing with. And I think the Planning Commission pulled 20 years worth of uh, use by right uh, site plans, and they all went through identical to the one that this Islamic Center did over the last 20 years. Um, so it, it, we're really changing history, and that might be what we want to do. And I really would like for for this resolution to be uh, bounced off of our legal department and for us to um, uh, word it properly for the intent to come out of the like the R15 zone uh, if it's possible and that, and and allow the and ask the uh, planning commission to study that uh, and then come back um, with a recommendation. Uh, I'd like for for the county commission also to take a look at it, rather than just the planning commission to take a look at it too. Uh, I, I don't I don't I don't want to appear that we're passing the buck. So so really, what I I guess what I'm suggesting is that can we ask Mr. Cope's office to take a look at this and and for us to study this process over the next month or so, and then for him to come back with this thing worded exactly the way it ought to be at our meeting and then we can debate that resolution and decide whether or not to forward it on to the uh, to the Planning Commission. Number one, I want to know if it's legal, if we can do that and not violate any federal or state laws. And if we can, uh, then we can debate that issue and, and, uh, uh, and decide whether or not we want to forward it on uh, to the uh, Planning Commission. and, and then the Planning Commission would have the opportunity, because that's their job, uh, to look and see how it fits in the, in the resolution uh, and then come back to us with a recommendation. Th this, this wouldn't be a process that, that uh, we would jump on like in one meeting. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, appear that we're making emotional um, decisions that may not be good legal decisions. Uh, I really want us to be on, on, on firm ground. I know that there's a lot of folks that are out there that are upset uh, about um, uh, the uh, Islamic Center being built when realistically there was never a vote to be taken. The Planning Commission never voted for a center. The County Commission it would never come before this commission, not ever. And, and uh, people are really upset about those types of things. I think what we're talking about is giving that the opportunity to go before changing our process and giving that the opportunity to go before the planning commission. And if they say yes, then it also comes before the county commission because we'd be talking about uh, a, a change in that use by right. So, both of those uh, entities would become involved in that process where the way it is now, neither one of us, the Planning Commission or the County Commission, had a vote. The only thing the Planning Commission did was to take a look at that piece of property and look at the site plan and say, does that site plan meet our standards? And it was either yes or no. And, and, on, that, and on those standards were, were, were landscaping, parking, setbacks, 
and, and drainage, I think, was, uh, was the issues that all, all we had to look at. This it, might, might very well give us the opportunity for public input. It also might very well give us the opportunity for, uh, uh, to make sure that it, it fits uh, in that area. We're talking about also some opportunities Steve mentioned a minute ago that you might start off small. I mean, they're talking about, I think, at the uh, uh, Islamic Center, they're talking about 200 families, you know, 250 people, something like that. I can't remember for sure, but it was fairly small, and they presented a 10,000-square-foot building, and everyone is talking about a 52, which is several phases into their building program. And uh, uh, that's ultimately probably what you ought to look at, but right now it's, it's phase one, and I think for them to do phase two or phase three, they have to go back before the Planning Commission and get that site approved. I might be wrong about that. Steve, do you know? Gary, do you know? I don't know. They, they, they have to take each site each phase. back yeah. at each phase. Now, if what they present at each of those phases is no different from the master plan, right. it's pretty much pre-approved, but if they make any changes, it would have to be completely reviewed and approved again. But, but that's the way it, it works with all of with the all churches of that expand. Church. Uh -huh. And even, let's just, let's just take as an example churches out of the equation, and let's just say used by right by our school system, okay? They're going to go into neighborhoods and they're going to build these schools that are sometime up to 1,800 and 2,000 uh, children going to those schools. And you add teachers and all of this, you're talking about huge influx of traffic and these other things, we still have no right in that. Is there a comparison in those, in those two? There are going to be those that say, yes, there is a comparison. So why are you looking at one and not looking at the other? And, and so we just have to be real careful here, I think, is how we proceed with that. And we're drawing a, a church or a religious institution out from a protected status that they've had for forever. So just have to be real careful, and that's the reason that I'm I'm suggesting that we uh, we get good legal foundation. If if Mr. Cope's office uh, looks at this and says it, it's okay and words this in the proper way, I, I think that uh, I feel much much more comfortable about that. Uh, Commissioner Black, Phillips, would, would, would you? Hey, Commissioner Jordan, I'm sorry. I, I know Commissioner Black has, has, has had his hand in the air for Mr. a while. Black, I, I guess my question, um, just on these square footage buildings, I mean, I'm. Just throwing a number out there, we're talking about, you know, 52,000 square foot. Is it any way, uh, since uh, Steve uh, here, uh, estimate as far as the people uh, load would be in that kind of structure? Uh, I mean, I mean, has it ever been any we, numbers? We, I know we talked about schools. There are standards. Uh, <clears throat> there are standards. Basically, it's usually what the assembly capacity is. You know, whether you're worship assembly or other sure. buildings that are mostly sure. purpose, you can determine what those capacities are. That's how you determine typically what the parking requirements are. Uh, so you can uh, sort of take a look at what the maximum uh, capacity is, and and, the, and once they reach those capacities, you can set certain standards that would apply and be yeah. different. The building codes that the county's got adopted, and the fire code that the county's got adopted. Those regulations would have to, you know, be put forth mm -hmm. on any any type of building, uh, and it is an assembly type occupancy. Mm -hmm. So those requirements would fall under those guidelines. Well, that was just my concern as far as the traffic out there. You know, <laughs> like like said about that being a small small of a road, state road. That was just one of my concerns. I just addressed it from some of the people who called me. There's a number of us that have served in, in, uh, in planning capacities, you know, John being one of them, serving for years on the uh, city BZA. But what usually happens is that, like if, if the planning commission, I may be wrong, but this is the way I understand it, the planning commission approved uh, a building site of 10,000 people. Traffic is not an issue for a building that size and the number of people that would be in it. 10,000 square feet. You Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. What did I say? 10,000 feet. I'm sorry. 10,000 square feet. Correct me again, Jeff, when I screw up again. <laughs> it's 200, Thank you. It's 250 members. <laughs> but, but if in phase two, phase three, phase four, however many phases that it is, if it gets up to a, uh, a population and a traffic count that might affect the sa general safety of the public, that's when the Planning Commission 
can make some adjustments to that exactly the way that uh, the World Outreach Church has expanded and expanded and expanded. They reached a point in time where traffic was an issue and they were required to do these other things. And I think that's what the Planning Commission has just gone through with the Islamic Center. Uh, uh, the, right now, public safety as far as traffic would not be a concern, but if it grew and doubled uh, and they expanded into phase two or whatever, then it might be at that point in time. It might be a safety issue and they would re be required to do other things. Is that the way you understand right, it, Gary and right. Steve? Uh, Gary, you, excuse me. You've touched on, uh, you said what, drainage and traffic and... The site plan... L landscaping. The site plan, it had, it had the, the landscaping, it had drainage, it had parking, and, and the setbacks of the building. From the, from the property lines. It was all that was even proposed. Um, the, so, uh, uh, the affected property values around that, whatever, Not I'm just talking about any, I'm not singling this out over here, uh, any other place. And could that not be brought into no. that camp? That camp? Not on a site plan. No, not on a site plan. Okay. Sometimes those are, are arbitrary. Sometimes you're, you know, someone may think that they would, and we would probably know that they would, but you can't say that for sure. You can't say that they would adversely affect. Some of them, it may increase the value in, in some sure. some situations, so you, you can't arbitrarily just say it's going to decrease my property value, even though maybe it's common sense that they probably would. Well, one so of the, the things we changed there, too, on that site plan, specifically was the inner and exit closest to Bills Road, Bills and Bradable. They had an inner and exit there, and now it's just an exit because the stacking lane wouldn't be a, uh, it'd be a dangerous situation there. So, that, you know, they moved it on down to where they just had the entrance into the, to the facility, to the church on the far side of Bills and not up to the other one. It's just strictly an exit because the stacking on exiting would be on the, on the property of the, Sure. I want to come back to Commission Jordan. I'm sorry I cut you off earlier. I think Mr. Black covered what I what I wanted to ask perfectly. So, okay, thank you. But John, it doesn't even uh, it doesn't even address your um, your road improvements, your turning lane. It won't allow you to to address that from a from a planning perspective. Um, it would if if um, if you conducted a a, a comprehensive traffic study and it revealed that turning lanes and those types of things were needed but generally you won't do those things if if they're not going to adversely affect uh, traffic in that area uh, if, if you put in a, a, a quick sack as an example there are going to be a lot of cars coming in and that out there all day but it does it adversely affect it and the answer would be, probably be no um, but uh, a, a traffic study could have probably been asked for if the uh, Planning Commission thought it necessary. But under the size that we were talking about, there's been dozens and dozens of them approved like that without those studies. And that question was asked to the plan director and, and, and under his experience and stuff in, in the past, he said it, you know, it didn't. We have not required the traffic study of any church. Right. New church or addition. Yeah. See, that's that's kind of where, where yeah. I have kind of have a problem with it because it just seems like and I, when I went out there and looked at it, it, it it's a dangerous intersection. There's there's no doubt. And I, I hear commissioners, um, y'all aren't one of them, but I'll hear somebody that'll argue all the time about we need a turning lane and we need this, and that's imposing a little turn lane or a turn lane on a on a little small business. A lot of times can't 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 afford something like right. that, and it really won't have that much of a of an impact, but this road, as y'all know, is such a small two-lane road, um, and there is a rise right there that is dangerous. But uh, going back to what you mentioned, Commissioner Phillips, and, and I agree with you for the most part, um, but you said Doug went back over 20 years and looked. It'd be hard, you'd be hard pressed to find something that was 52,000 square feet that's a private, that's gonna be a school, a meeting facility, a park, a cemetery. I don't know of, of a place that's been approved in the county in the past, I mean, 
You mentioned well, there's dozens there, and dozens. There, I, there, I don't there think there is one that's been approved. I can, dozens. I can show you those. Sites. I didn't say dozens, but I said there's one bigger than this that's been approved without okay. a required traffic study. Okay, with a cemetery? No, they don't have a cemetery. With a park? Yeah, I would say yes, you'd probably have to include that. I think Ms. Commissioner Phillips is right on target. Yes, sir. Some of this is perfectly acceptable and reasonable. Some of this has some need for some real serious legal review. Yes, sir. And uh, it's something this important needs to be on the agenda uh, at steering and then on the agenda following the adoption of whatever res resolution you choose to adopt at the commission with prior notice. Our, our eighth member, uh, Ms. Shelton, has a suggested motion maybe that we should y'all want to hear it forward a resolution to the legal department for advice and reward rewording with a report back and thereafter asking the Planning Commission to do a study <coughs> with a report to the Commission on changing the use by right I'll second it I'll make the motion I'll second <laughs> Uh, you could have just made the motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Let me just—I know I rattled on, and I apologize for, for that. And uh, but once again, what we're what we're talking about here is is not just for just cherry picking. You know, we're talking about changing everything. Mm -hmm. We're talking about changing any church Any religious or religious right. affiliation uh, making those guys justify certain things too and I'm not sure that's what the general public wants but I am sure that the general public is wanting something uh, and the general public if you change that resolution will have ample opportunity for public comment yeah. I mean, they'll all be at a public hearing that's even at the Planning Commission and then and that will probably the be commissioners good. and that will uh, probably be good yes okay no good. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Commissioner Sparks, we appreciate you bringing that. Real, real quick, I, I wanted to, Thank to you. say, I think our mayor's had some undue criticism from some people. And I just want to say, anybody's watching this, I, I've never met a more fair man than this guy right here. <laughs> and, and and he he cares deeply about this community. Um, and uh, uh, I just appreciate y'all's attentiveness to to, to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other business? If not, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good job.